This is a lesson about magnetic torque on current loops in a unit on magnetism. In a prior lesson, I had talked about forces on current carrying wires. These magnetic forces, because there's charges moving through a wire, there will be a magnetic force on that wire. Well, what happens is if we make a loop out of a wire, we will get a torque on that loop, and that's what we're talking about. Torque is a net effect of magnetic forces on a loop of wire. And in a prior lesson in Basics of Classical Mechanics, I had talked about torque and introduced the definition and how to calculate torque. And torque is a force applied at a distance from a pivot point, a center of rotation. And if I have a loop of wire, and I'm going to look at here a uniform magnetic field into the page, current flows counterclockwise in a square loop. So I'm going to put a square loop here and I am going to have a current flow counterclockwise in it. So there's a counterclockwise current flowing in this direction, and it says a uniform magnetic field into the page. So I know how to represent a magnetic field into the page. There's a uniform magnetic field into a page. And so because there is a current in a magnetic field, I know that this, these currents will all feel a force on them. This current and this current and this current and this current will all feel a force on them. Overall, they will add up to cause a rotation, and that will be a rotation about an axis. So let's figure out which direction these forces are. When I look at this right side, I have current going upward, so I'm going to put my thumb upward and my magnetic field into the page, and I see that my palm is pointing to the left. So there's a left hand force here. By the same reasoning, I'm going to conclude that there's a force to the right on the left hand wire. And so these two forces balance one another out. They're not going to cause any rotation there. They're just, um, they're summing to zero in the horizontal direction. Let's look at the top and bottom. On the top, I have a current to the left, so I'm pointing my thumb to the left. I have the magnetic field into the page, and I have a force pointing downward. So we see that there's a force downward in this situation, and by the same reasoning, I'm going to see that there's a force upward in this situation. So overall, there's no net force on this loop. It's a very happy loop. And what I'm going to note here is that this is consistent, and I put this term up here, magnetic dipoles. This loop has a magnetic dipole. It creates its own, its own magnetic field, right? Currents are the source of magnetic fields, and so this loop has its own magnetic field. If I put my fingers in the direction of that current counterclockwise, so I'm turning my fingers counterclockwise to me, my finger, my thumb is coming out at me. So when I look at this picture, I have a magnetic dipole moment out of the page. I'm gonna put that green here. There's mu. And I can see that the magnetic field and the magnetic dipole moment are anti-parallel to one another. Maybe if I think about looking from the side, if I look at the side view here, I have the magnetic field going to the right. If it's going in there, it will be going to the right in a side view. And then the dipole, the magnetic dipole moment is pointing in this direction. And so that dipole is pointing anti-parallel to the magnetic field. To me, this is equivalent to like a ball at the very peak of a hill. Push one direction or another and it will roll down the hill, or in this situation, it will rotate. The magnetic dipole moment will want to rotate to align with the magnetic field. So let's do a different situation here. I have a couple of examples. Uh, magnetic torque on magnetic dipoles. I borrowed the few examples from the OpenStax College Physics text in order to exemplify the right hand rule a little bit more and how it has an effect on the torque. So when I look at the magnetic force on a current carrying wire, right, I have this equation, and I'm looking at the right hand rule with this cross product. When I look at this picture, 
what I'm going to know is I'm looking at a side view of a wire. So I'm going to see that it extends into the page and there's a back side to it and then it comes back out of the page and it says that the current's flowing sort of in this direction around that loop. So there's a whole loop there. If I looked at it from the top, there would be a square loop. But if I look at this from the side view, I only see the current coming out of the page here and going into the page on this side. Okay, so that's how that picture works. Um, on the bottom here, I have current coming out of the page. I have magnetic field going to the right, and so I can see the forces upward on that side. I can see that the force is downward by the same reasoning on the other side, and overall, that would cause this loop to rotate in the magnetic field. And to stay consistent with what I was saying in the previous slide, if I find the direction of the magnetic dipole moment, right, the magnetic dipole moment, and this is what I said, twist your fingers in the direction of the current, so it's going into the page at the top and out of the page at the bottom, and I get the magnetic dipole moment pointing up and away from that loop towards the left like this. So this is the direction of the dipole moment here. And what I'm going to point out is that the magnetic field is applying a torque on that magnetic dipole moment until that magnetic dipole moment aligns with the magnetic field. Right? It's feeling a torque in the clockwise direction here. Again, I can do the same thing. When I look at this situation, I'll figure out the direction of the magnetic dipole moment. Into the page on the right, out of the page on the left, I get mag magnetic dipole moment upward. And so there's the magnetic dipole moment. And I can see that the torque is causing it to rotate to align with the magnetic field. That's what wants to happen is the magnetic field, the magnetic dipole moment will align with the magnetic field. I can continue with a couple more examples. Here I can see on the left here, if I find the magnetic dipole moment, and you can do this for yourself, I have inward on the bottom of the page, outward on the top of the page, I can see the magnetic dipole moment is to the right. And the magnetic field is also to the right. So that's mu, and the B is also in this direction. The angle between those two things is zero. Okay, so that's what you're seeing when we're looking at the torque and calculating the torque and thinking about the magnetic dipole moment of this current carrying loop being in a magnetic field. We look at the angle between this magnetic dipole moment and the magnetic field. Okay, uh, you can see over on this side, if I do the same thing, the magnetic dipole moment would be pointing down and to the right instead of um, in any other direction. So it's going to feel a torque that will rotate it in the counterclockwise direction in order to align this magnetic dipole moment with the magnetic field. So that's the easiest way to figure out the direction of rotation is to find the magnetic dipole moment of that loop with right hand rule and the direction of the current. And then think the torque is going to cause the, that dipole moment to align with the magnetic field. This is the foundation of nuclear magnetic resonance imaging, MRIs. You can take images in someone's body by getting atoms to align along an outer and external magnetic field. And that's why uh, you need that um, device around the human being to create that magnetic field in order to have the, uh, the dipole moments of the atoms of whatever's inside to align. So now that we know the direction of torque, let's figure out the, the magnitude of it. I have the equation outlined here. It's a cross product between that dipole moment and the magnetic field. The magnetic dipole moment for a single loop is given by I, A, and the direction is normal, and we saw that. The direction is normal to that surface area. Whatever area of that loop, it'll be the dipole moment will be perpendicular to that. And that's what this N hat means, is it's perpendicular. The magnetic field is in here, and the direction is given by right-hand rule. Going to remind you that the units on torque is Newton meters, and that's something that I went over in a prior lesson. The dipole moment, this equation for dipole moment, I had also gone over in a prior lesson. 
calculating torque, this is the official technical equation for magnetic torque. If we're going to actually calculate it and plug in values, this is the way to calculate it. Is the torque on a current carrying loop is going to be that dipole moment, IA, so there's the current and the area. I is the current and A is the area. We may have a number of loops, so that's how we would take that into account is N, number of loops. We have a magnetic field and then sine phi. This is a Greek letter phi and it is the angle between the perpendicular to the loop and the magnetic field, right? That's what I had been looking at before. What is the angle here between the perpendicular to the loop or the dipole moment and the magnetic field? This picture called it theta, but I call it phi. Um, so that is the equation there. I've picked a straightforward example for us to practice with this equation. It says a proton has a magnetic field due to its spin on its axis. And that should make sense. A proton is a charged particle. Uh, and when a charged particle spins, it's essentially a current. And so then it will create a dipole moment. And it will have its own dipole moment. It has a magnetic field. So it would have a magnetic field here as well. The field is similar to that created by a circular current loop. Uh, so if we looked at this, we would see that it has a circular current loop, and this might be the radius of a proton here. A circular current loop is 0.65 times 10 to the negative 15th meter, so tiny, 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 in radius with a current of, look at this, 10 kiloamps. 1.05 times 10 to the fourth amps, 10 kiloamps. That's a huge number, teeny tiny, huge number. Okay, it says find the maximum torque on a proton in a 2.5 Tesla field. So we're just going to use what we know. Um, our loop here, we have one loop. The current, they tell us 1.05 times 10 to the fourth. The area, we're going to do pi times 0.65 times 10 to the negative 15th, and that needs to be squared. We need radius squared, so that's the area of the loop. We need the magnetic field, 2.5, and it wants the maximum torque. So maximum torque is going to happen when that angle is 90 degrees, so that's the maximum there. So the maximum torque, when you run these through the calculator, you're going to get 3.48 times 10 to the negative 26 newton times meters.